Good morning, everyone. I've really enjoyed this week uh, looking at uh, our text. Um, and the title for my talk this morning is, so unsurprisingly, Jesus the Truth. Uh, the reading, thank you, Dorothy, for reading our uh, reading, uh, John 14, 1 to 11. But our text is verse 6, which should be coming up on our screen. Thank you. So if there's a word which summarizes this text, I believe it could be the word exclusive. In this verse and, and the wider chapter, Jesus is speaking to his disciples and making a profound exclusive statement about his identity and him being the path to God. And we know that this is the week leading up to the Passover. And through chapters 14 to 17, Jesus is giving comfort, encouragement, and teaching to sustain his disciples, especially as he knew what was coming next. His eyes were on Calvary. Now, each of the three elements in verse 6 has a specific, specific meaning. By the way, I, the, re, the way I read this verse is this. I, I say, I am the way to God, the truth about God, and the life of God. That's the way I tend to read it. So, firstly, I am the way. Jesus proclaims he is the way to God, the means by which people can come into right relationship with the Father. And of course, Eric spoke on that last week. And thank you, Eric. I know you're listening or watching or whatever on Zoom this morning. I am the truth. And in a spiritual and moral sense, Jesus is the embodiment of God's truth. He is the source of divine revelation about God to mankind. I think Colossians 1 says it wonderfully. It's one of my favorite scriptures. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. And so we'll come back to more on the truth in a moment. And thirdly, I am the life. Jesus tells us that he's the source of eternal life. Believing in him and following his path leads to eternal life with God. Through Christ, we experience spiritual rebirth today and the promise of life after death. And next week, Mike will be looking at the subject, Jesus the life. So my purpose today is to speak about Jesus the truth. It says in Titus, an elder is required to teach the truth. So that's what I'm doing today. <laughs> I should have given you all cards with scores on, shouldn't I? Yes, 10, 10, 9, whatever. So an elder is required to teach the truth. Now, people listening to Jesus speak had in most cases put their trust in Moses and the prophets, even though they pointed to the coming Messiah, Jesus himself. Jesus embodied the law which was the foundation of the Jewish faith, but they could not see it. They could not see who Jesus was. Jesus was teaching it's about believing, not doing. Faith, not performance. Devotion from the heart, not accomplishments. That is the means to pleasing God. Jesus said, love the God, Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and with your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's fulfilling the law and the prophets, and Jesus modeled it perfectly. Now, it appears that most people in our culture today place a high value on believing truth to be relative. So you have your truth, and I have my truth. But I think they disregard the obvious logic and ultimate impossibility that two contradictory truths can't both be true. There can only be one that which, which is true and that which is not. If Jesus declares that he is God come in the flesh, we have a choice. He cannot be partially God. He is either is God or is not. He can't be half God. As children of God, we have made our choice 
for truth. Jesus and the Father are one. Excuse me. So Jesus did not claim to be a truth or to be his truth. He claimed to be the truth, the ultimate, inarguable, definitive, eternal, and supreme truth. It's not that Jesus te merely teaches the truth or that his words are true. He does teach truth and the words are true. But Jesus is truth embodied, truth incarnate. And the truth of his claims means that we are to believe in him, trust in him, and submit every one of our truths to his absolute uh, truth. Having faith in the words and the works of Jesus strengthens us immensely and ensures a foundation for our Christian life. And we can pray with the psalmist, Psalm 25, verse 5, Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Saviour, and my hope is in you all day long. As followers of Christ, Scripture, mainly John, tells us that we are to love the truth, walk in the truth, and believe the truth, for Jesus is the truth. I want us to go back to uh, Exodus 3. Do you remember Exodus 3? <laughs> Moses had been out in the desert looking after sheep for his father-in-law Jethro, I think his name was, for 40 years. And he comes across a bush that's burning, a bush that's burning but is never consumed. So he approaches the bush and finds that God is speaking to him from this bush which is not consumed. And essentially what, to just to shorten the message, should we say, God is saying to Moses, I want you to go to Egypt where my people have been in captivity for 430 years and I want you to bring them out. I don't think Moses was too impressed with that idea and neither would you or I probably. That seems like a big job. All those people and he's going to be responsible for bringing them out. So he finds, he starts to ask questions which hopefully will find a way of him escaping this responsibility. He said, when I go to the people of Israel and say, uh, I'm going to bring you out of captivity, they're going to say, who sent you? So who shall I say sent me? This is what you are saying to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. I am has sent me to you. It's a pivotal moment in redemptive history. God reveals himself to his people and comes to redeem them out of exile and leads them into a new life and a new land. God's name discloses who he is and what he's like. He is the I am, the eternal, unchanging, self-existent one, infinite and glorious in every way and above and beyond all created beings. He is God. Now, in the Greek, the words I am is ergo emi. And because when Jesus applies the title I am, he uses er, er, ego emi to himself. He claims to be God. He claims to be God. Ego emi. Not a helper to God or a great teacher for God or even a friend of God, but the divine, eternal, pre existent, infinite being. He is Israel's God. He's greater than Moses because he is the God of Moses. He is, has life in himself and he can give life to us. The Jews knew taking on this title was making such a claim, which is why in John 8 they pick up stones to kill him. Now there are seven I am ego eme statements in John which best confirms the ultimate claim of Jesus and his truth, which we can believe in. He is God and he is the God of Israel. All the Old Testament and God's redemptive acts throughout were pointing to the coming of Jesus as God in the flesh, the fulfillment of all Old Testament types and shadows. So here are the seven I am ego emi statements that Jesus made, and I'm sure you will remember them. Thank you, Carl. The first, 
I am, ego emi, the bread of life. This is a phenomenal statement. He's equating himself with bread. Jesus is saying he's utterly essential for our lives. Jesus is utterly essential for our lives. Second, the, the life Jesus is referring to is not a physical life, but eternal life. Eternal life. Jesus is trying to get the Jews thinking off the physical realm and into the spiritual realm. He's contrasting what he brings as their Messiah with the bread he miraculously created the day before. The day before, a few days before, he fed the 5,000. Is Jesus essential to your life? For sure. But you have to choose. You have to choose. Secondly, I am ego emi, the light of the world. In declaring himself to be the light of the world, Jesus was claiming that he is the exclusive source of spiritual light. No other source of spiritual life and truth is available to mankind. Amen. No other source of spiritual light and truth is available to mankind. Everything else is darkness, and that would be our situation without Jesus, our Redeemer and our King. Are you walking in darkness today? Are you lost? Jesus will shower his light into your life and direct your path. Three and four. I am ego emi, the door or the gate. Also, I am the good shepherd. In John 10, verses 1 to 18, Jesus makes two of the I am sayings together. He claims to be both the door through which the sheep must enter, as well as the shepherd who knows the sheep and lays down his life for them. No other religion leads us to God. All must go via Jesus the Savior. Have you committed the well-being of your life to Jesus? You can assuredly follow Shepherd Jesus. Fifthly, I am Ego Emi, the resurrection and the life. When Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life, he was claiming to be the source of both. There is no resurrection apart from Christ, and there is no eternal life apart from him. Can you claim with certainty this morning that Christ is your ego Amy? Sixthly, I am ego Amy, the true vine. Jesus is living energy. His spiritual reality is eternal and will continue to nourish and sustain us just as the roots and trunk of a grapevine produce the energy that nourishes and sustains it. It's branch... Uh, and sustains its branches while they develop their fruit. Jesus wanted us to know that even though we cannot see him, we are closely connected to him as the branches of a vine are connected to its stem. As long as we abide in him. Are you connected with the vine this morning? How can you not be connected with the vine? Jesus the vine, where all our spiritual sustenance is drawn from. And of course we come then to the verse which we are now in. I am ego Amy, the way, the truth, and the life. And we can come back to that verse on the screen now. Thank you. So Jesus did not tell the truth. He embodied it. Not just tell the truth, rather. He embodied it. He put truth into a visible, tangible form so all who so desire can see it in him. What credibility that gives. Now, a school teacher, like Mike singing on the front row here, can present a mathematical, grammatical, scientific, or historical truth. And what kind of person he is does not matter much. However, if a person teaches moral truth, his example, what he is in his character, is very important. If you're teaching moral truth, you have to be moral. Do people want to be lectured on purity by an adulterer or on honesty by a liar and a thief? No. Consider this. Jesus is a personal, living, almighty God whose ways and laws are intrinsically right. They are true. 
Therefore, a person who has God's spirit and who is believing Jesus' truth and will use it every day must eventually become like the one he models himself after. We model ourselves on Jesus, the truth. For God is making us kings and priests. That is, leaders and teachers of a way of life based on revealed truth. He will not have anyone in his family who does not embody truth as Jesus did. In other words, we too will be truth personified. However, for this to occur, we have to live in the truth day by day and hour by hour. The world is extremely loud. It's trying with all its might to drown out truth to drown out your faith. Let Jesus the truth be louder still. How? Be in scripture continually. Especially the words of Jesus. And always have Jesus close to you in prayer. Two things. Be in the word. Be in prayer continually. That makes Jesus louder than the world's truth. Truth is far more than facts. It's not just something we only act upon. It acts upon us. We can't change the truth, but the truth can change us. As Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Life, abundant life, comes to those who find and acknowledge and live in and believe that Jesus is truth. One of my favorite preachers and writers is R.C. Sproul. And uh, I was just, re- this is his book on Romans. And uh, I was very fortunate in finding a, a, a reading on truth and at this moment I'm not finding it which is not helpful yes I found it wonderful and I, was, I just went wow when I read this because I was obviously thinking about Jesus the truth so I'm going to read this paragraph if I may as I finish this morning truth is that which corresponds to reality as perceived by God Only God has a comprehensive knowledge of all reality. God knows reality in its absolute fullness. There's no nuance or microscopic subatomic particle of the universe unknown to the mind of God. Do you like that? Hmm? What he knows, he knows perfectly, eternally, and exhaustively. The one who knows all things without error is the source of all truth. That is why the battle for the Bible is so vital and why Christianity was founded upon the conviction that the Bible gives us not the individual existential subjective insights of mortals, but the self-disclosure of truth that comes to us from the very fountainhead and source of all truth. God is the standard of all truth, which is what makes truth so sacred. When we are willing to play with the truth, to allow truth to be slain on the streets in order to maintain relationships, we are striking a blow against the very nature and character of God. No possession we have is more precious, more valuable, and more powerful than truth. Amen.